Hey, what's up, everybody? Video 44 coming at you with another. <clears throat> Let's talk. Let's talk because the Lakers. The Lakers are. Uh, it's reports that they're finalizing. Well, LeBron James, let's just put it like this, is finalizing a uh, destination for uh, the annual pre camp before training camp. It's like getting everybody together uh, for Wapor. Uh, and I guess they're trying to figure out if they want to do it in either San Diego or Vegas. And it looks like San Diego is more likely to be the spot. So, guys are going to come down, get together as a unit see where they head at, see how the new pieces look uh, from a chemistry standpoint, start some something from there. Uh, and so that's, that's a normal thing. That's nothing. <laughs> that's not what I turn on the camera to necessarily say, but I think it does speak to an understanding that the Los Angeles Lakers are just going to move forward whether they've made a trade for Kyrie or not. they got to get the ball rolling. Uh, here's the thing, though. I think that's ultimately what the KD thing and everything is about the urgency for KD to kind of make these type of demands is basically because the clock for the entire market has been on hold and so I just truly believe that not to say that he's doing it for the Lakers but I think that KD's trying to expedite all of this trying to trying to force people to make some type of move so that teams could finalize what their build is and then start the process of these various training camps and, and programs that are going to be a, pre, a prelude to what the teams are going to be about. So for teams like us who are trying to establish their culture and for a guy like KD who's not sure what culture he's going to be entering to, into, uh, these, these trades need to start happening. If they're going to happen, they need to take place. And if they're not going to happen, then it's going to be hell to pay. So... It, they need to happen um, right now I think is what guys are, are essentially saying so with the Lakers having the situation be as it is I've heard rumors that they may be uh, leaning toward putting that second pick in to get Kyrie Irving not necessarily putting it in to get anything else but uh, that's the rumor now how much room how much validity that holds I do not know so I would say none to be honest with you I would say none but it's floating out there and we are aware that that rumor is now starting to float um, I, I just don't know if that makes the Lakers happy I guess I, I think it makes us better for sure we get Kyrie we're happy but I don't know that we've ultimately uh, put ourselves in a position to make the secondary moves that we need to make in order to make ourselves the team that we're dreaming of becoming if we enter that second pick uh, into the equation for Kai. Now, I would imagine Rob Palenka has figured out another route to take that would satisfy the situation if for some reason he's now changed his tune on that pick. Um, either that or the pressure of Braun not signing the extension is making it so that guys are ready to kind of do a little more to make make things happen um and of course it, i guess you could say uh reality is set in for people who understand that the price tag on everything is going to be more expensive so as to where you were valuing your picks um a certain way maybe a month and a half ago unfortunately uh now if if you want to make a certain move or two you have to value those picks differently so uh, the Lakers just have to do what they have to do. I guess it, it's one of those situations where if you never, if you don't see another choice, then you can't blame yourself for, for doing what you have to do. So um, I just don't see a, a solution for saving this season if the Lakers are forced to um, go forward with Russell Westbrook, THT, and the, and the roster as he is. I just don't see us being good enough to even – really make the playoffs to be honest with you the pieces just don't make sense I don't trust the core to stay healthy it all doesn't make sense right now you bring in Kyrie Irving it changes everything in such a way that the core now is not relied upon as much to succeed you can now put Kyrie Irving on the floor with a bunch of other role players and he can carry the load in some situations at least enough to give our guys a breather uh, AD and Braun so that's ultimately what we're hoping he would do. What 
Russell Westbrook we don't expect would be able to do because of um, not not only because of how bad he looked last year, but because of just a natural fit, even if he were to be himself. So, um, yeah, brick shots, bad defense. It just doesn't fit with those guys. So we got to find a more natural fit. Kyrie obviously will help on the offensive end, stretching the floor and things of that nature. And, of course, uh, we just understand that overall our pieces will make more sense. Then our defensive players will uh, be – utilize more properly on the offensive end they won't be such um liabilities if they can't shoot the three ball because Westbrook can't shoot so they need to be able to it's that kind of thing now with Kai on the floor you don't necessarily have that being a problem so this makes our roster makes more sense once you put that piece in place um and maybe remove a few others and that will have to be moved in order for him to come in I'm thinking about THT uh, so on and so forth. So that's just what I'm looking at. Uh, that that will make us all very happy. And I think it'll make us good enough to at least feel good about the push we can make for this upcoming season. Do I think we can win a championship? Not realistically. Not if I'm being absolutely honest with everybody. But the hope of of us getting there is all we really need. Because once you have LeBron James in year 20, um, you expect that he's going to will himself to as far as he can go. And if you give him enough, it's just about whether or not the field's going to be able to outsmart him and ultimately defeat him. And that's going to be your odds anyway, regardless of what you're building this upcoming season, whether it's a little better than what we expect him to be or not. So um, I, that's that's the bottom line. It's, is Bron and what we're putting around him good enough still to obtain a championship? And only he can answer that question. Um, so so if I have any concerns, it ain't going to be because our core ain't going to be good enough for something like that. We've already proven we can win a championship. And, um, you know, Braun is Braun. <laughs> it, it's literally that simple. So uh, as we move forward, I think we have the lengthy players that I've said we need to get, you know, that'll help us defend some of these players that must be defended. I think we have. We're one of the few teams out there that actually have those pieces right now. And I think it's okay that they can't shoot very well. You know, last year we went all shooting. Everything was about pro shooting percentage on our, in terms of our bench and our role players. Giving a million dollars to anybody who can shoot over 40%. Who cares if they can do anything else? And it just made for a very bad basketball team. This year, we're taking the opposite approach. Shooting is the least of our concerns. We want to make sure you can do literally everything else. And that may make us a bit deficient shooting the ball in some cases, but if you bring in the right pieces like Kyrie Irving, maybe a Seth Curry or a Joe Harris, then you feel good about being able to space the floor a little bit. You groom, uh, obviously, Cole Swider to come in and be a key shooter for us, and he is so elite at, a shooting, the, at shooting the ball that he's going to help with that at the four spot immediately, absolutely immediately. And so it's in one of those situations where I feel really confident that we'll be able to get away with not having a lot of shooting. Plus, some of those bigs can't shoot. <laughs> like Thomas Bryant can shoot. And, you know, I think about uh, uh, what's it, my guy from Golden State, uh, Juan Toscano Anderson. He can shoot. And, you know, it's one of those, those things where it's like, okay, well, you think you have spacing issues, but then you dig a little deeper and realize, yeah, those guys are competent enough to make it so that your spacing isn't terrible. Your spacing is terrible, essentially, because, unfortunately, you have Russell Westbrook down there and what he's prone to do. You remove him from the equation, you just have guys that are not going to take a lot of threes, guys that are not, you know, a Damon Jones not going to take threes, but you don't care. You don't have him down there for that. And if you need three-point shots, you remove him from the floor and you bring in Thomas Bryant, et cetera, et cetera. All of that withstanding, you understand that AD is going to be the guy that they've said that they're going to run everything through. As of today, Darvin Ham has made the declaration that they're running the offense through Anthony Davis. I don't have any problem with that declaration Declaration like that. I just understand that it's, it's just like saying who the starters are going to be. It's just, it's just like saying who, who's going to be the closing lineup. You know, I listen to these type of conversations, and I'm amused by them, and I think it's really cool to um, kind of look at the game that way because we've always looked at the game that way. But 
as I've learned and grown with the game, I understand that that's not actually how you strategize. It, there is no set starting lineup. There is no set closing lineup. What you have, in most cases, is the need to match up every single night. Some nights you're going to need to match up with bigger guys. Some nights you're going to need to match up with smaller guys. And that's going to determine what you see on the floor most nights. Now, if you have some set system where your lineup is starting these guys and that's it, then you know what you're going to see. You're going to see a quick timeout and then them audible out of that lineup and you're going to see them proceed to match up if they're trying to win. So it doesn't really matter. Like say, oh, I want, I'm going to put this guy, this guy, and this guy on the floor. Okay, but if the coach decides to go small, guess what? You're not. It's that simple. So I don't put any, and I mean zero stock in the who starts at all in this era. In the past, it mattered when half the team wasn't very good. You know what I mean? When they weren't very skilled, rather. It, 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 it mattered more. But now, in a league where practically everybody's positionless, or it's about to be groomed that way. Yeah, no, that's not that's not real. It's about matchups, man. It's not about who starts or who any of that. No. No, that changes from game to game to game is what I'm trying to say. That's not it's, if it's set, then chances are you have a positionless lineup <laughs> of players that you can have interchangeable at all times, like the Boston Celtics. Or superstar level players like Golden State who've never changed their lineup. But have interchangeable pieces on their bench that are coming in for them. Um, or they're not doing it right. <laughs> it's one of those three. It has to be. Uh, so I, I just don't think that's the, the common NBA anymore. This is not This is not the way they run lineups and the way rotations are going. If you're still doing things the way they used to do it back in 1996, 97, starting lineup, seven bench players only in rotation, shorten your bench in the playoffs. If you're thinking that way, you're probably not modern. You're probably probably stuck in the past so that's what i'm looking at there man more fluid basketball rotation uh perception is what i'm saying i don't care who starts just look at the minutes who got the minutes dude got 40 minutes clearly he was the one on the floor did he start maybe not but he was on the floor for how long 38 minutes okay simple as that that's how we start looking at it. all right so moving on from that i really like what we have there because of it I think we have enough players that we can move them around and be interchangeable to be very, very flexible so long as our bigs are hitting threes. Um, and, of course, we make the move that we need to make to get to complete the team. Man. If we don't complete the team, let's say we got Russell Westbrook coming back. I really don't like us, man. I'm not going to front. I just think that Darvin Ham is going to have to just remove Russell Westbrook from the starting lineup. That's the first thing he needs to happen. Probably put um, Austin Reeves in the starting lineup or something like that, which ain't going to go over well. But for continuity's purposes, probably makes sense. Um, Kendrick Nunn, you're going to see more of him than what you would expect to see in situations like that if Russell Westbrook is part of this team. I just don't think that fit makes any sense basketball-wise at all to have Russell on the floor. THT, you must trade THT, especially, especially if you're forced to keep Russell Westbrook. It's one of those situations where I'm less likely to keep THT if I'm forced to keep Russell Westbrook. He got to go for sure because those two cannot play on the floor at the same time. And they must, as we've said once before, they must. It's throughout each and every game, at some point, their, their minutes are going to overlap. And, it th and at that time, if, the, if THT hasn't developed more so than he had in the last year, and it's just not going to work. Those two should not ever be on the floor together. So that should be priority number two for the Los Angeles Lakers. If get THT into a situation that allows him to have the ball in his hands. Uh, as I think it was Jalen Rose who said that. I don't remember who it was, but I agreed with him. THT is a guy's a ball handler. He's probably a, a point guard. You know what I mean? That's probably what he is. Or a ball handling uh, three. And uh, I just I just think his development is going to be it's going to be tough, but when he gets to where he's going, you'll like what you see there. He's going to develop. He just has to get a good coaching staff to dig in with him, you know, and do the work. Put the hours in, hours and hours and hours of film and, and practice time and studying the game so that he can become his best self. Once he gets that aspect down, it's a wrap. He'll be a, he'll be a fantastic star. But... Um, if he if he continues to just on the trajectory he's on, it's not going to work out. 
it's going to be a lot of work put in there. So that's that's what I hope, man. THC gets in the right spot and uh, yeah, moves on from this Lakers stuff. Same goes for Russell Westbrook, obviously, although that looks like it's going to be a little tough to move him. Hopefully we can get something done, man. Hopefully. That's all we can really say. Um, and that's another thing. I would like to think that, you know, this whole situation will get resolved before San Diego. You know, I, I, I don't know how likely that is. I think it's probably not very likely. But it would be great if they could get a trade going so that we can have our team complete by the end so that they don't have to have that awkwardness that may be present uh, if, if for some reason... Uh, Russell Westbrook is there and, and it's not good energy or if, even worse if he's not there that's like a big headline so either way it'll be great absolutely great if Rob could come a, you know to a conclusion uh, with, with, with the negotiations with, with Brooklyn you know and get that done if you're gonna throw in that second pick make them pay for that that's all it is you know I always say you can have the pick thrown in. Just make sure they give you back the value for that pick that you feel like you're not getting back in regards to um, Kyrie Irving. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, I'm throwing in my two picks, but you're going to give me Seth Curry or whatever it is that you don't want to give me. You're going to give me Cam Thomas. Like, that's how that's going to be because I'm not going to be throwing in that pick and just getting back what I'm getting back. No, that's not going to happen. I'm not going to hold on to that pick as if it's, you know, attached to my face, but I'm also not going to, you know, throw it over, throw it in there and be unhappy with my decision. Nah, you're going to pay for that. Simple as that. It has a value. Make them pay for it. That's all I'm saying with that second pick. Uh, so, yeah, that there. Um, can't can't think of much else, man. Honestly, cannot. Not in regards to our team. You know, we're, we're still just... Very much looking forward to seeing what our team looks like. Once we know what players can do, guys like Lonnie Walker, uh, you know, uh, some of the new guys that we've picked up, Brown, once we know what they can do, then we can know what expectations we have for our rotations. But as of right now, it's all hypotheticals, what we think guys can do. Uh, so I, I think players like that, those two players, they could potentially make a jump of some sort. You know, they're young guys, so... Why would why wouldn't it be why would it be out of the question that they play better this season than they have in previous situations, especially under a tough coach like Darvin Ham, who's going to dig in, who's going to put in the hours, etc. You know, I think he's going to be um, very much an imprint on what we see out there. I think guys are going to re respond better to him uh, than what we saw guys respond to uh, to Frank Vogel last year. I think that's what we ex we hope to expect. You know, and. I that's also something I'm curious about. Maybe he can have an effect on these players that we had last year that struggled. That maybe you know can can translate to seeing them seeing them look great out there. I don't know why why wouldn't I think that a Darvin Ham led basketball team can't get better results out of Russell Westbrook than what we saw last year. You know what I mean? We we think about what it looks like if you trade a player somewhere like let's say we trade him Russell Westbrook to his ideal fit and maybe Darvin Ham just happens to be the coach there but we would have a lot of faith that Darvin Ham would do a much better job because he'd be out of LA he'd be in a different situation and you have confidence in Darvin Ham well he's not LA, out of LA but you are bringing Darvin Ham to LA so that that makes it a different situation and I, I'm curious to see if that translates in some way to positive basketball play, uh, if for some reason these guys are still there. Now, Russell Westbrook, I don't know, because the fit is so funny. He's in such a weird space with everything. I just don't know what to expect from him. THT, however, all you got to do is put him in the right fit and, again, give him the right coach. I think he's going to develop. So could this be that situation? Could, could THT... If by some reason we're forced to keep him, could it be the year he breaks out? You know, mess around and, and back yourself into a great situation by accidentally finding out that you were just a year early on THT. And, and if you just waited, 
he was about to bl blossom. Now I don't, I don't, I'm not predicting that. Put it like that. I don't see that coming. But things like that have happened before, and you know sometimes the best move is to, there's, there's no move at all, especially with a guy that young. So there's a lot of different ways this th thing, t thing can go. I think it's imperative he move because of Russell Westbrook. But with a team with Kyrie Irving being the point guard, uh, THT's fit isn't as bad. It's not as bad. And that's an interesting dynamic as well. Now, I don't feel THT and, and, and Kyrie can't play on the same team at the same time. Absolutely not. I think that's an okay fit. It's not amazing, but you're going to be fine there. So, you know, that's that's the... That's what happens when you just remove certain pieces, you know. It don't even take a whole lot to change an entire team. You get Russell Westbrook out of here and bring in a Kyrie Irving, and immediately, not only is your uh, situation better at the point guard position, but just about every other position improves subsequently just off of the sheer notion that you have shooting, spacing, etc. So that's what's up man and everybody knows that which is why they're making us throw in those two picks to get rid of russell westbrook that's simple as that not only do we have the problem with russell westbrook but everyone knows we have that problem <laughs> so it would be great if it were a secret uh we, we would have that as leverage but we do not because uh you know media people like myself we talk a lot about it so it is what it is now um of course these other deals are still in the back burner if for some reason we cannot get Russell you know if we can't get Kyrie we can still try to make a move with the Pacers we can still try to make a move with Houston and I think we might be able to squeeze another team in possibly as well make a move for a shooter uh, I look at a lot of situations you know what's interesting uh, this ain't got nothing to do with the Lakers but I'm just throwing it in there we always talk about how young players, some of them are going to have to be let go of in these various situations. You don't expect these players to be moved, but like DeJounte Murray, if they're not going to resign or if their team doesn't think they're going to resign, they could be moved. Wiseman's name has now been mentioned in that situation. Now, like I said, it ain't got nothing to do with the Lakers. I'm sorry for even throwing it in here, but it is interesting that that player particularly is one of those guys where you look at Golden State and they're saying, okay, that's the guy we may not be able to pay. Because if, if he's on the table, KD to Golden State might get back on the table, so, which could trickle down to the Lakers now, of course, being able to get Kyrie because then KD can get moved. So you see how that kind of ties in? That's how I made that make sense. But keep an eye open for that because – that is one of those things that I've been kind of hinting around it for the last couple of weeks about how that possibly could change the landscape of what we expect in regards to KD. If some of these teams start looking around and saying, yo, yeah, we love our core, but is he going to stay? Is this guy going to stay? Who can we pay? You know, and we don't want to end up in Sac being Sacramento and have to give away a guy we really, really like because we had to, you know, make it work for the money. So, yeah, Golden State is definitely going to find themselves in that situation with some of their young players because they value players like Draymond Green and, and, and Clay Thompson. So to keep them on salary, you got to pay that salary, and that keeps the money out of the young players' pockets. So there's some tough decisions that teams have to make. And like I told you guys, some of these teams, yeah, these young players are really, really good, but not all of them going to turn into great players. Some of them just going to be all right over time. And if you have an opportunity to make a trade for a Hall of Famer, hindsight is always great you don't have that but sometimes taking a risk can make it so that you feel good about that risk being made after after a while so that's something i'm looking at some of the young guys it ain't getting paid man not by some of these owners that have their contract right now so you will see them swapped for pieces as that decision is made so yeah that's what i'm looking at man Jakob purtle's another one in san antonio I just, I totally don't see him starting the season with San Antonio. Doesn't make any sense. They got to trade him. Uh, get the most value for him. Simple as that, in my opinion. So, we'll see what happens. Um, 
yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it, man. That's my, my Laker Talks video for this evening. I appreciate everybody rocking with BDF through a very rough summer for basketball talk. But uh, we give you what we got, and we're excited about the little news that we have, man. Hopefully we can get our, our team together and make ourselves a championship caliber squad and let the cheap chips fall where it may. We don't care if for some reason it doesn't necessarily get us over the hump. At least we gave ourselves a chance. That's what we're after, man. BDF 44. Thank you all for watching. I'm out.